Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Jiu Jitsu Without Limitation. Today I'm in Palm Beach County with Mauricio Bilardo. He's going to show us a technique that you can use uh, when someone is getting the Americana. You either bait the Americana or coming off of the Toriano Pass, right? Yeah, the Toriano Pass, the traditional Toriano Pass, very common, very traditional, very uh, you know, fundamentals, you know. Yeah. Uh, we can use it as a bait. Or if you have a muscle memory, you know, train the position a lot, you can use it, you know, in a situation, you're gonna be right. in the best, you know, I mean, the worst scenario, mm -hmm. and somebody's past your guard, and you already have this plan to, to, right. to stop the pass with the submission. Perfect. And, and as you know, in our, if you have a limitation um, that limits you to your back, you're, you're stuck in that situation. Like myself, I have a T5 injury, so I don't have lower abdomen or lower back. So I'm, I can't even move my hips to follow them. So this position, using the, a lot of arm work, arm movement, gives you a lot of leverage to, to successfully get through this. And uh, I think it's a really good addition for anyone with limitations. Okay, so here, now he's here attacking and you know, my arm should be here protect and I kind of like leave my arm a little bit here. So, you know, it's a good bait because you're gonna, you know, be very attempted here to, to make a grip, you know. So I have one arm here, usually like underneath, you know, the other one here, like protect here to stop the, the, the mouth and also to, you know, get me ready to maybe replace the guard. So I leave a little bit the arm here when he goes to attack, like I, I make the grip on him. So when he's going, I grab the wrist before he grab my wrist. But I do, I don't go straight here to the, to this lock. What I like to do, I like to extend the arm, and I turn it this way here. Okay. So then I make the grip. Now I'm gonna use my hip movement, and I bring it here, and I always bring my, you know, the, my my main goal here is like shrink a lot his arm. Okay, because here he's strong. See, if I go here, okay, he has no power. So it's a big difference between a, you know one inch on the, at this point here. So I shrink a lot. Okay, now you know he, he's locked here. He cannot move his arm anymore. And I start to bring his elbow towards the ground. Okay, so I get really strong here, and I and I go like here. I want to touch his elbow, land his elbow. I never land his elbow on the mat, but I go like the whole force, the whole force here, and should put the elbow on the ground. Okay, go again. And here, blocking everything. Leave the arm. You go. I get him here. Okay. Then I don't stop here. I just go and come back immediately. Okay, shrink first, and then. Try to put the elbow on the ground. Okay, another situation is like He's passing my guard, okay, we are here, and he go to, to, to the to the Toriana Pass, okay? I come here, and I get his arm here, see? Okay? So, as a defense, sometimes I, I, I hold the sleeve and I change for that, but if I want to go straight, as he's going, look, I come here, okay? See? Yeah. While he's going, the hand is already on the wrist. This one goes here. Once I make this grip, now I go here. At this point here, see, it's difficult for him, you know, he, 
you get a situation here that you, and I and I also am not going to stop here to give him time for him to think, you know, what's the, his best option. So the swing, make the grip nice and tight. Okay, gonna break the grip, shrink the arm, and bring it to the ground. In this position, it, it's a position that I get stuck in a lot already. Um, but the, the thing is, that I used it most of the time to uh, to get them to move. I always had trouble trying to uh, lock this down. I, I usually would go for a wrist lock or just use that movement to get them to react. But today, Mauricio pointed out the very the detail that I needed in order to lock this up, and I'm going to explain it in, uh, more for you. So. When I'm here, and a lot of times I'm gonna bait this anyways because in, in, when you're playing in a, uh, a para jiu-jitsu game, you, with the lack of movement and everything, you end up having to bait a lot. So you have to put yourself in a dangerous position in order to get a, a positive position. So in this case, it's baiting this Americana. Uh, when he goes for it, the same, as, the same as he explains is I lock up too. This is a good, um, this is a good addition for, for mine, usually I'd lock up and start bringing it over, but this gives me more, um, it's allowing more space for me to get over there also. So that's, an, uh, that's a really good addition is, is pushing this. If you have your, able to push off this leg or have your hip movement, you can go with it. But since I'm flat, I have to, I have to use a lot of upper arm strength. Um, so not everything is leverage in this case. But you're going to just extend it to kind of disrupt his his uh, attack, and also it's giving you more leverage and kind of bringing that uh, opening up that shoulder for you to uh, to add that more pressure. Now, this is the difference: is I used to go here, bring it over, and then go and then start attacking wrist locks and and stuff. But the issue is, I could never get this leverage because they would always pop up on me extend their arm and then I ended up having to fight this a lot so what the difference he showed me today is when you're bringing this over your focus is to put this elbow on the mat like he said you're not going to get there but your focus is to drop this elbow what I found out by focusing on dropping that elbow for me the focus is pinning basically this hand and my shoulder I'm basically pinning, as I'm trying to drop his elbow, I noticed that I ended up pinning his arm between my arm. And that was at, adding, that was keeping his move, his arm from moving where I can start applying that, that leverage more. But now when I drop it to the ground and apply it, that's where I was missing, that's the link I was missing. Is I was here controlling, but I was giving him enough time to react, sit up, even go to the mouth. But it's this motion. It's you're squeezing everything in, and then you're rotating your arm. For, for me, I'm not rotating my body because I can't. So I'm like squeezing it all, and then I'm rotating it. It's already halfway there when I start the submission. How's that feel when, you, when, uh, when I bring it over? Terrible. So, <laughs> I mean, it feels tight when it's hard oh, yeah. before, or do you feel like I have to adjust at this point? No, right here, I mean, yeah, I can't extend. I can't really do much. And what, what's happening is if he wants to extend, extend, he can extend, but go back. But when I'm grabbing this arm, extend, it's, it's keeping that arm from moving. So that's one good detail. So if you close everything up tight and then start your movement, can you go up to Neon Belly or anything from here? No, it's... Because it's already locked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the that's what you're trying to achieve is the lock before you lock it. Uh, so again, you got to this point. Um, he's he's smashing me. There's nothing I can do. There's really no attack here, so I have to give something up, and I, I bait this. When he does that, I lock up. I extend out, bring it back, and here's where the important detail. Everything locks tight, tight and then you just move in your, the motion. So you're not trying to go like this with his arm or trying to go this way. You're just tight and then you're moving the motion. 